Next, we're going to tackle the headlights. So I was just going to leave them on here and and start running the wires and put in new bulbs, but I was noticing, looking at this, I tried to clean it up best I could, but it's not very pretty. So I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to take these off of here and we'll run them over to Spectrum and we'll get them polished up because we just can't put old tarnished stuff on such a nice truck. Yeah, well, you know, that's just like uh, your opinion, man. Uh, it's another Saturday. I'm, I'm working outside. It's still dark out. I, uh, I need lights to see what I'm doing and and it's uh, supposed to be minus 20 this afternoon. So I don't want to start the old girl. I think that's a little too a little too cruel. So we're gonna leave her parked where she is and just work uh, work outside in the uh, in the fresh air. I mean uh, I must be a little bit nuts. I, I think I need a shop someday. So God willing, we'll get one. Have you paid your dues, Jack? Yes, sir, the check is in the mail. But for now, this is this is what we got. So we're gonna, like I always say, keep picking away at it. We're gonna upgrade the signal lights. Uh, the the lights, I still don't have back from the, uh, the polisher yet, the buckets. So what we'll do is we'll at least run the wires, terminate everything. I can make sure that, uh, that the bulbs work and everything's ready to go. So when I do get them finished up, we'll slap them on the truck and we can call that a day. So still lots to do in this episode. So let's get at her. That thing was on there. It finally uh, sheared off. Yeah, so we'll uh, we'll get rid of that. That guy was a little rusty. So this is obviously the original with the incandescent bulb inside, and these are the upgraded ones. So they're uh, pretty neat because they they look a lot like the original, but they uh, they're LED, so they're a little more modern. So I like these. So we'll get these put on here and throw away the junk. Oh, so cool, I can't feel my fingers. So now what I'm trying to do is figure out a couple things. Figure out, this is the, uh, the box where I terminated all the, uh, all the signal lights and the headlights last year and what i've noticed is i've lost my my clearance lights on the air cleaner so something's going on there but the the roof light still works so now i'm just going to test out and figure out what's going on so what i like to do for testing is i bought a spare a spare light you put the obviously the ground on there and then you can see which one gives you what so in this case there's our clearance lights there so now i know that the second pin in is hot for clearance lights. So now I'll just do the same thing with uh, with signals. So there's our right signal. Now, which one gives us right? There we go. So now we know third pin from the right is the right signal. So it's a good, uh, good test. I mean, you could use a, a multimeter as well, but I find this a little more fun. Oh, it's starting to get a little nuts doing electrical in this weather. It's just not the right weather for <laughs> wearing gloves and all that other fun stuff. But I guess what work really is easy when it's this cold. Very cold. Oh, oh. oh yes. Oh yes. That bread feels wonderful, Ricky. Okay, I think we're gonna switch to uh, working indoors. Well, inside the peat anyway. So I got a little space heater going here and gonna finish up some of the work that I wanted to do in the interior. We'll finish up the wiring. 
for the switches, clean this up a little bit. And then I got some other stuff. I got those new switches I want to put on. And I got some new uh, air knobs and some other fun stuff. So we'll start working away on that and try not to freeze. <laughs> I'm just installing these uh, switches that I got off that that peak cab and that on the hunt episode. It's funny because the the load light, well, actually that one's better. This one's kind of worn off, so we'll swap that one out. And then I, I really like this one. Not that this truck has ether, but I just think that's cool. This is a dead hole. The original owner, uh, the guy I bought it off of, he had this wired up for the Jake brake. But of course, I added the Jake brake switch there. But it looks like he uh, he cut his own hole here. And the problem is it's a little, it's a little too big. So I'm, I might have to figure out a way to keep that in there. But I think that'll be cool. Just cause we love ether so much up here in Canada. Oh yeah. Okay, time to put on some fancy stuff. So I got these glitter balls from a fan, Jack in New Jersey. Thanks Jack, I got these Oh my goodness, back way back before summer, back in June, I think. And I've had I've been waiting to get an adapter to take because these are these are shifter knobs. So they've got threaded inserts and they're designed for uh, for shifters not to go on the smooth stubs of the air valves. So I bought I, I finally found some on the internet and I, I could just couldn't make them work because uh, the threads were too big and I couldn't get the inserts out of here and I was worried I was gonna break the uh, break the ball. So I ended up making my own. I just got some tube material and drilled it out and I had to, to turn it down a little bit. Well, I don't have a lathe. I just got a emery cloth and a grinder, but I got it small enough to where I could get them in there. And then I JB welded them in there. So I, I'm pretty sure they're not gonna come out. So they were kind of a, a custom built jobby here, but I think they're gonna look just fabulous. Check that out. So that's our, that's our brakes. This is our trailer feed and then this is the uh the last one if you just want to apply the brakes on the trailer oh come on there we go oh. oh that one's a bit of a tighter fit there we go something like that <laughs> now that's some serious bling all right and then i got little rather than roll tins i was thinking of just going with a with a threaded bolt and nut because it was going to just be too tough to try and get the uh, the roll pin in there. So something like that. And then just put the little nut on there. I think that's a nice touch. So thanks again, Jack. Your donation is now officially a part of little by little. There you go. So in and out. Okay, and next, uh, another fan reached out to me. He really wanted, uh, well, he noticed that I switched to orange on these. And uh, this was actually the original ball that Jack bought me that I just threw on here. And then I had to order another orange one. And then this, I had a blue shifter on here, kind of turquoisey color. And if you remember the original On the Hunt episode, episode one where I went with my daughter and looked at that old minty Kenworth, because it actually was mint. Uh, this, the guy that bought that truck, he had this, this was on the, uh, the power tower. So the, uh, for, to activate the winch and he wanted a blue one so he reached out to me and said would you trade straight up so we traded for that so now I got an orange t-handle and then once I was driving around in one of the videos one of the fans said well you need you can't have blue glitter uh, sh uh, switch uh, deals so he said I'll trade you the blue ones for I've got some orange ones so he traded me a bunch of orange ones which I think are just gonna be great so we'll put those on there now I've been waiting Wait a while to put these on. I wanted to sort out all the lights and all that before I put these on there because I didn't want them to break. Oh, that one's a little loose. Might have to put some epoxy in there. Oh, that one's tight, okay. There we go. Look at that, old school. Oh good, the one on the Jake's tight. That'll work good. So how does that look folks nice okay and then one final piece 
the previous owner, there was uh, there were some switches here that he took out of there and he didn't like the holes. So he went and got this plate that says, you know, this Peterbilt is custom built for, and he just mounted it over there. And I've, lo I've been looking at that for the last three years since I've been working on this truck. And I thought, you know what, I gotta take that off of there and get it, uh, get it engraved. So the unfortunate part is they couldn't uh, engrave it in black. I don't know if you can see it, but it says this Peterbilt's custom built for twin sticks. <laughs> so we'll get that put on there. And I think that's just about gonna finish off the dash. Oh, you can hear the wind blowing. So it's probably, I don't know, minus 15, but with the wind, it's probably minus 25. And it's gonna go down to minus 25 tonight with the wind chill, it's gonna be below minus 30. So it is gonna be cold. Okay. That's looking pretty sharp. Custom built for twin sticks. Right on. Well, I always say that truckers love lights and shiny things. <laughs> and look at this. Got these back from uh, from the polishers. And I have to say that Stefan and the uh, and the boys at Spectrum did a, just a fantastic job on this. So we'll get these mounted, hopefully without scratching them. I think that's going to look just awesome. And now the only thing that's missing, the more things you shine, the more things you notice that need polishing. So I still need to do the grill surround. So I think what I'll do is in the spring, maybe I'll zip the truck over to there and, and have Stefan give this a little bit of a shine, but I think that's gonna look awesome. Okay, so next what we're gonna do is we're gonna swap out the headlights. These are pretty old school bulbs, so we're gonna go with halogens. I would like to do LEDs, but I already had halogens bought for this truck. So what I might do is put them on here for now and then uh, flip them over to Project Snowman and then put LEDs on, but I think it'll work just fine for now. Obviously you gotta put on these, uh, these nice chrome wire looms to just mount, click to the bulbs and then run through the, the hood here and then get wired in. And then uh, I was talking to the, the guys at the polish shop there and they mentioned that they did the best they could. This is the original chrome ring, but it's just been uh, hit with rocks through the years and just couldn't get it perfect. So I ended up getting new headlight bezels. So I'll mount those on there. And uh, I wanted to show you, so the outers are the low beams, there's three wires and the uh, the high beams are having both bulbs going so if you just obviously grounds your uh, white so one circuit is the is the outer so that'd be your low beam and then the other circuit which would be the uh, the middle or the red wire it uh, lights them both up so that's how the low and high beam works all right let's get out Yes, I forget. The last time I did this on the uh, the other set of headlight buckets I had, they're not designed for these newer bulbs that go deeper with this connector. So I had to hole saw out a gap on both sides to let this fit through. Oh, fun. Plus I should probably give a little bit of paint to this rusty metal here and clean this up. Oh, what I thought was gonna be a 10 minute job is now a good hour. Great. There, something like that. Boy, that new bezel sure looks shiny. Okay. One side down, one to go. We still got to get them wired and I'm going to run new relays for them actually as well. Okay, so now I'm going to wire in the, the signal lights, the new LED signal lights I mounted on the fenders here. So I'm just running some more loom. Now originally they had it through a little metal tube that would be tucked up against the fender here. Oh, this one must have got bent a little. Let's see like that. 
and that would hold the wiring tight and snug. So I don't know if I'm going to reuse that or just run loom. But I was looking at this, I always thought this was a clearance light, but in my it's just a reflector. I could have swore that uh, the, the Easy Rider put new ones on from Dirks and they were actually clearance lights. So I'll have to see if I can get this upgraded. Maybe this was just a cheaper version with just the, uh, just the reflector. So I'll have to look into that because I mean, I'll have the power right here so it won't be too big of a deal. Okay, so I finally finished up all the wiring and the loom to the, uh, the front signal lights and the front headlights. And we brought it all into our junction box. And of course you need to still terminate it and put a little rings on the end. But before I do that, I wanted to redo the wiring from the switch. Now I'm unsure, I don't believe, I believe that the, the raw power goes through the switch and all the amperage goes to the, uh, goes to the device, whether it be the headlights or, or uh, load lights or what have you. And I wanted to upgrade it. I wanted to upgrade it to a more modern style with a relay. So I found these on Amazon. Again, Amazon has got good stuff. And these are a proper 40 amp fused relay. And now why do you want to do a relay, you ask? Well, most of you probably know, but for those that don't, relays are a way to isolate the, uh, the high amperage power that's going to the device, whether it be the headlights or maybe an electric water pump or something like that and then not running that high amperage through the switch. So it has a, a second circuit that's controlled by the switch. So when you flick the switch on, it runs a little coil in here, closes a contact, and then runs power down to your more, uh, to more meteor device that's gonna be uh, drawing a lot more amps. So I found these on Amazon. I think they were, I don't know, 20 bucks each or something. We're gonna mount, I'll probably mount four of them up there, just to have some for extra. And you find uh, a hot wire, which I did. This has got 12 volts all the time. So we'll run this up to each one of the relays. And then the other hot device on the other side of that goes out to your device, as I said. And then these lighter wires go up to your switch on the dash. So you just don't run high amperage through the switch. Because I learned that the hard way when I was in high school. I had roll bar poacher lights on my, uh, on my pickup truck. And I ran the, uh, I ran the 12 volts right off the, the fuse panel, right through the switch and right up to the lights. And we were setting up camp one night in the middle of the bush and we had them on for a good hour while we were setting up the outfitter tent and uh, it melted the switch all of a sudden the lights go off and i go over there and the switch was just red hot i could have, could have burned my truck down and it just melted the switch all together so you want to make sure that you use relays uh, when you're running some high amperage devices like headlights so anyway we'll get started and uh and wire that up these are actually cooler than i thought you can uh you can actually click them together. They link together like this, and you can build a bank of them. Isn't that neat? And then you can just plop the fuse in there, and then you got the, or not the fuse, but the relay, and then you've got the uh, little fuse on there as well. So that'll look nice and clean, and I can just run loom up right up to the uh, firewall there and then zip it back down. Cool. diagram off the internet there so essentially power or from the alternator from the battery of the alternator goes through a fuse line so you can put an inline fuse but in this case we already have fuses so we don't need to worry about that so power for the uh for you know we're going to do two two circuits one for the low beam one for the high beam so we're going to use two relays up uh one for each so i don't need uh, inline fuses because they've already got fuses uh, integral to the relay so pin 30 is our power coming in so that's this guy that I put together. So we'll run the power into all the, uh, in this case, that's the blue one, which is probably you think it'd be red. But then, uh, so the power out, the output to the device is 87. So there's uh, four pins on here, 30, 87, uh, 85, and 86. So 30 is power in, which will be the blue wire. And then uh, 87 is out. So that's the circuit that has the, uh, that can take the amperage. And then the other two pins, go up to the switch and they just make continuity through the switch so we'll go ahead and get started putting that together
Okay, so now I need to run wire from the relay on the hot side. So this would be the, the red pin. I'm gonna run one down for the low beams and then one down for the, uh, for the high beams. And we'll probably use this third relay for the load lights that we'll wire up later. So yeah, pretty straightforward stuff. Just time consuming, holy cow. Days slipping away from me here. Been working on lights for three Saturdays in a row. <laughs> we'll hopefully get it done today, but I don't know if we will. There's still some more stuff that I want to do. So it's put in place now. I screwed it snug to the firewall, and obviously, we still need to loom this all together and zip tie it so it's clean. But now what I'm gonna do is take all these, these ends and put uh, all soldered little rings on the end, and then we'll be able to, uh, to terminate them at the, at the correct stump. And maybe we'll get lights, you never know. Got it all loomed, zip tied, and brought into here. So now I need to somehow sort out all this rat's nest and make it all fit inside this box. And then we should have lights. <laughs> that's a good sign too so there's our low beams mint okay now we'll try high beams now the uh the floor switch didn't seem to be working so i just rigged it up to flick high beams with an extra switch okay. oh getting tired knocking stuff over Oh, sweet. That's how she's done, folks. That's how she's done. All right, let's keep going here and wire up the, uh, wire up the signals. Okay, so this is clearance and this is left. So let's just do a test. Oh yeah, look at that. Nice and bright. Let's try the signal. Okay. <laughs> awesome. It's funny, I would have thought both front and back would have lighted up on clearance, but I guess it's just the, uh, the signal on the back. Still seems kind of odd though. Uh, we'll do the other side, uh, just to test. That's that and that's right. Okay. Should be enough contact, make it work. Okay. Oh, we still got clearance on this side. Oh, look at that. Okay. Well, I wonder if I got a defective light because this guy's lit up on both sides. Huh, weird. Maybe I'll have to take this guy back. It looks like the back's burnt out. Oh, what a bummer that is. Oh, well, at least it's wired correctly. So we'll tighten these up and put that cover plate on and see what else we can do before it, before it gets dark. So I've gotten all tightened up now. And uh, yeah, still only got half a light. So it's blinking on both sides, but then as soon as I turn off the, uh, the signal light, the back goes out. And I wired it exactly the same as the other side. Yeah, so it's still buggered. Wonder if they'll give me a warranty on it. All right, put that cover plate on. Just about ready to go have a nice hot cup of tea and Jack Daniels, but I'm digging this. Getting lots of lights. <laughs> uh, sorry, Grand General. I was thinking about it and I realized that I got the common flip with the signal. So when I uh, flip them back, they both work now. So 
not a defective product. They make a good, uh, they make a good light. Just a defective electrician. Hey, don't put yourself down, Al. You're not, uh, you're not, you're not good. You stink. So there you go. She's far from perfect, but uh, I say she just got a little bit better. Won't you shake hands, buddy, with a truck driving man? I run him from the coast to the southern land. Hit the smoky mountains, but I have no fear. Air brakes are screaming, and I'm fighting with the gears. Got a load of freight out of New Orleans. Find the Mrs. Kales in the Tennessee.